Hello and welcome to the third episode of Super Samurai Market here at Nishikasai at Token Matsumoto. Um, like it's a custom in Japan, we start actually talking about the weather. So, what does our forecaster say? Well, the weather forecast is looking pretty good, I suggest. And um, on September 23rd, we experience the autumn equinox, and the significance being we're transitioning into fall season. That means uh, diminished day temperatures and less humidity. So comfortable weather to be out exploring Japan and visiting sword shops. And finally, we can turn off the aircon. Get rid of the air conditioning, save a little on the electric bill, and use that money to buy a tsuba. So, Robert, how much sorts are we looking at today? Well, we're going to experience... Uh, we'll be presenting two beautiful katana. And one of them is uh, signed Kwachi no Kami Fujiwara Masahiro. This is a Hizen To, and it's 72.1 centimeters in length. Um, it's a very attractive blade. And the second katana we're going to look at is also um, an Edo period blade, signed Mutsu no Kami Fujiwara Toshinaga. And that blade is dated as well, uh, dated, and it's the fourth year of Jokyo, which in... Uh, the Western calendar comes out in February in 1687. Mm. And that blade is 71.1 centimeters. They both have almost the same uh, Kambun Shinto form, right? And also early Edo period. What's yeah. the main difference, you think? Well, um, as far as the overall shape of the blades, they're quite similar because the sori is similar and the length is similar. But the workmanship inside the blades are remarkably different but you know both of them are from a very similar stage in sword development beginning with like the Masahiro's Kambun Shinto mm -hmm. and, but they're both very attractive swords and a lot of interesting hataraki mm -hmm. to keep the collector fascinated mm -hmm. with these pieces Beautiful bright hamon, actually, very much to see. Yes, the so dekigai <laughs> is the expression in Japan. Dekigai. So listening. And yeah. with that, we have um, three Kodogu items today. We start with a Kozuka by Goto Mitsuyoshi, the 15th master of the mainline Goto school. And yeah, one of my favorite makers of Kodogu, actually, in a beautiful mint condition. We have a second Hayashi master, a Tsuba, um, with plum tree design, by uh, quite a famous master from the Higo schools. And uh, the third one is actually one of the most famous master of Kodogu pieces um, of all times. It's by Hamano Shozui, a Kozuka. And Shozui yeah, is sometimes said to be the fourth um, most important Nara uh, master as he studied under Nara Toshinaga and yeah we are happy to show you some very nice pieces today. Um, my name is Paul Kremers and I'm Robert Hughes and we're here at Token Matsumoto in Nishikasai and if you get a chance visit Japan and definitely pay a visit to Mr. Matsumoto's sword shop. Yes, enjoy watching. Thank you. The first item featured in today's Super Samurai Market at Token Matsumoto is a sword of 71.1 centimeters length signed Mutsu no Kami Fujiwara Toshinaga and dated the fourth year of the Jokyo era. So this was uh, February which comes out at 1687. The blade is in Shirasaya without Koshirai, but has been recognized by NBTHK with a Tokubetsu Hozon certification. So the area is Yamashiro and Issei province where Toshinaga was active. The, the blade itself, which we're going to view is a Shinogi Zakuri blade with 
Iri Iorimune. And of course, you know, this is dated 1687, so it's in the earlier part of the Edo period. The length I mentioned at 71.1 centimeters comes out to exactly 28 inches. The sori is 1.8 centimeters or 0.7 of an inch. The motohaba is fairly deep at 3.3 .3 centimeters or 1.3 inches. The sakihaba is 2.2 .2 centimeters or 0.9 of an inch. When we start looking into the blade itself, we see in the jihada that it's koitame. And the temper line or hamon is gunome midare. And you can see features of nie, sunagashi, and ashi. This blade has bohi. So there's a, there, there are he on each side of the blade. And the boshi itself is a sugu notare with komaru turn back. The nakago is ubu. It has sujikai file markings and a kengyo style bottom. Uh, there are two mekugiana, but one of them has been filled. And this blade um, comes with a practical copper habaki. But overall, the appearance um, is a very strong and robust looking blade. So, talking about the smith, Mutsuno Kami Toshinaga, um, first generation, he was born in Tokushima, so in Awa province. This is present day Shikoku. And he had an elder brother and a younger brother, and all three of them were swordsmiths. And together, they left their home region and moved to Kyoto to study the Horikawa tradition of sword forging um, and through that endeavor um, the first generation Toshinaga was given the title Mutsu no Kami. His elder brother received the title of Yamashiro no Kami and the younger brother received the title of Musashi no Kami. So all three of these um, brothers went on to forge um, important swords and each one created a lineage that lasted two or three generations. Eventually, um, the first generation Toshinaga, the Mutsu no Kami, moved from Kyoto to Osaka and then lastly to Ise province. So overall, this blade has a wider than average mihaba and it's got a good length. Um, the koitame is very attractive. And because it's dated, this is also a very attractive feature because there's no guesswork about at what stage in his life the blade was created. It was forged in February of 1687. Overall, a very strong and attractive sword blade. Coming in at a price of one million Japanese yen, which, if you're holding U.S. dollars, this is only six thousand seven hundred dollars. So, it's a good opportunity to take advantage of the exchange rate and add a beautiful sword to your collection, without damaging your pocketbook. Yeah, give yourself an early Christmas present. Take advantage of that exchange rate. Thank you. The second item for today's Super Samurai Market at Token Matsumoto is a spectacular Hizen blade signed Kawachi no Kami Fujiwara Masahiro. This blade comes in Shirasaya with a Tokubetsu Hozon certificate from MBTHK. So if you're a fan of Hizen Blades and of Masahiro in particular, you may be quite interested in this particular work. Of course, 
it dates to the early Edo period, so it's a Kanbun Shinto blade. And the price is very attractive. This blade is being offered by Mr. Matsumoto for the price of 2 million yen, which, if you're holding U.S. dollars, is a spectacular deal at $13,400, roughly. This blade has great length. It's 72.1 centimeters long, which is 28.4 inches. The curvature is 1.8 centimeters, or 0.7 of an inch. And the motohaba is deep at 3.3 centimeters, or 1.3 inches. The sakihaba is 2.4 centimeters, or 0.9 of an inch. You can see the Nakago. This blade is a Ubu Nakago with a single Mekugiana. And the uh, rust condition of the Nakago is as it should be, showing roughly 300 years of patina. So, as we're looking at the blade now, you'll see that this blade, of course, demonstrates. Hizen Konuki Hada. It's very tight and very dense. And there's also Koitame. If we consider the Hamon, you see that there's a kind of irregular pattern here um, because the Hamon shifts from a Suguha to a Gunome Midare. And then, if you're looking at it, you'll see there's Tobiaki and konie, lots of ko-ashi in the hamon, and kinsuji. Now, from the perspective we've just seen, you may have noticed some dark spots. Um, these spots are actually tobiyaki, and under um, the LED lighting, they turn a little bit dark, but um, they're actually, you know, attractive little spots of, of tobiyaki. So this type of irregular hamo with a mixture of suguha and gnomi midari makes for an interesting artistic presentation. So as we proceed along, you can see all of these features The blade in hand looks so much better than the presentation we can provide with video. But this is just to give you an idea of uh, what this blade entails and how attractive it is. So as we look at the Nakago, you can see there's Sujikai file markings and an Iriyama Iriyama bottom to the shape of the Nakago. The Habaki is two-piece with uh, the bottom part, Shtagai silver, and the Uagai is a silver base with a gold foil application and then Yujo style file markings on the outside. So, a little bit of background about the swordsmith. Kawachi no Kami Masahiro um, this is second generation. He was the son of the first generation, and his real name was Hashimoto Yashichiro. He was born um, and followed in his father's footsteps. And originally, um, his working name was Masanaga. And in 1660, he received the title of Musashi Daijo, and then Shortly after, a year later, he received the title of Musashi no Kami in 1661. Then, in 1665, with the death of the first generation, his father, he picked up the title Kwachi no Kami and also changed his name to Masahiro. So the name Masahiro came from his feudal lord. And the reference was because Masahiro's 
work resembled the famous Soshu Masahiro Smith. So there was, from appearance in the work, there was a kind of linkage. And the Masahiro lineage itself continued right through to the Meiji era, so there were 10 generations. The second generation Smith, whose work we're looking at today, basically held the same reputation as the first generation, so very high level. And these are among the best of the Wakihizen swordsmiths. Masahiro passed away in 1699 at the age of 73. And this lineage, the Masahiro lineage, as a branch family um, of the Tadayoshi group, um, which included you know, Yukihiro Smiths and Tadakuni Smiths, all of these collectively were referred to as the Wakihizen. But the interesting thing about the Masahiro Smiths is even though they were a subcategory of the Tadayoshi family group, their compensation was actually higher than what the Tadayoshi Smiths were receiving. So the implication there is that um, somehow their work had gained the respect of their sponsors. So as a collectible, um, if you're looking to add a strong he's and peace to your collection, this definitely is worth your consideration. Tokubetsu Hozon paper, very attractive blade in Shirasaya. Our first Kodogo item today is a Kozuka by Goto Mitsuyoshi. Mitsuyoshi was the 15th master of the Goto mainline and became head of the school at 1804 at the age of 24. It is to be noted that actually Mitsuyoshi can also be um, called Kobi in Japan, which is sometimes actually the, the more frequent name I'm hearing here for him because Mitsu um, can also be read as Ko and Yoshi as well as B. We have really a very nice Kozuka here in, in mint condition, I have to say, with a family of chicken here, the rooster on the right, the hen on the left, and the small chick inlaid in gold in the middle. Yeah, as you can see, the here the opening where um, the kokatana would come in is really without any kind of flaw and the whole outside the gold foil is um, is marked with beautiful yasurime also at the end you see it's really very well made you should always when you're looking at goto pieces or when you're searching for items to purchase look for this kind of quality which has no um, no small, yeah, so to say, hicks or small flaws in the in the rim. The piece is signed Goto and Mitsuyoshi. When we zoom in, we can see the, the fine linear nanako. and the inlays in silver and gold of the rooster's feathers. And also take a look at, at the beautiful rim here. And the Yasurime going around the whole piece. Yeah, this is a very charming and elegant Kozuka by Goto Mitsuyoshi um, with Tokubetsu Hoson papers for around 400,000 or <laughs> exactly 400,000 Japanese yen, which would be equal, equal to probably about 2,600 US dollars.
The second item today is a Higo Tsuba by the second master of the Hayashi sh school, Shigemitsu. Born in 1652 as the first son of Hayashi Matashichi. After his father he ranks as one of the top masters of the Higo Kinko masters, maybe even as the second best of all of them. The design here shows a plum tree growing yeah, out of the Kotsukahitsu here on the left and forming the whole rim and blooming around the Kogaihitsu Ana on the right side. It's actually a quite beautiful idea to have all the parts of the Tsuba except the Sepadai being part of this one tree. As you can see, the Hitsuana here are inlaid in Shakudo. Yeah, it's very typical for the Hayashi school. This Tsuba shows this very densely forged iron with a smooth surface. Even though it was, it was left unsigned by the master, the execution and the design and the overall composition as well as the form of the Sepadai point us here to Shigemitsu. Yeah, with 8 centimeters, also quite a good size for such an early tsuba. The piece was attributed to Shigemitsu by the MBTHK and it received Tokubetsu Hoson. Yeah, it comes with a custom made Kiri box and what's very special and you can only see with high quality items mostly it has an additional shifku, the small pajama um, which the box can be put into. This tsuba is available for 1 million Japanese yen, currently accounts to roughly 7,000 US dollars. Yeah, and last but definitely not least today, we have a Kozuka by Hamano Shosui, the founder of the Mano school and yeah, maybe one of the most famous Kinko masters of all times, really. Shosui uh, studied under Nara Toshinaga and sometimes he's actually mentioned as the fourth of the Nara Sansako, the gre three great Nara masters. Others also say that he's the real first Machibori Kinko artist. Whichever it is, it is yeah, without doubt that he ranks among the top of all Kinko artists, which is definitely one reason why there are so many forgeries of his works out there. The design is called Nami Chidori, which means plovers flying above the waves. and the meaning of this design is, um, yeah, it means to overcome obstacles together in a family. As you can here see, 
the family of three birds um, flying over these over these waves. Now let's look a bit into the details. The the birds here are inlaid in silver and their their feet in gold. The background and the base is made from shakudo and we can see a yeah a fine tsuchime which a tsuchime background which means is a special hammering technique which was yeah said to be invented actually by the first um Nara master Yasuchika um Tsuchiya Yasuchika who um yeah by that time there's a rumor he couldn't afford nanako makers so he invented the cheaper way to cover the background of his pieces with this Tsuchime hammering technique. The backside is yeah, a bit typical for Shozi where he tries to imitate maybe a a wooden, a rough wooden structure here. And you can see the signature, it's Signed Shuzi, um, Gyonen Rokuju Nana. So he made this piece at the age of 67. Shuzui in the past was also read as Masayuki. Some still refer to him under this name. And yeah, the other reason why Shuzui was forged so often might be that people might actually think it's easy to create because when you look at this, it doesn't at first glance strike you as as a top machibori piece but that's actually really the specialty of Shozui where he where we could say he, he was really an artist creating these yeah these very subtle designs and here yeah, it's more about really the interpretation and coming up with with the idea and with the with the picture here for this for this Kozuka rather than the very detailed and super fine um, execution. Yeah, this is a very nice Kozuka by one of the most famous Kinko masters available for 700,000 Japanese yen, um, roughly six or uh, 5,000 US dollar attributed to Amano Shosui by the NBTHK and received Tokubetsu Hozon. <laughs>